Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about water. Water has many amazing properties that allow life on earth to be possible. If water did not have these structures, life would not exist. First of all, water is a polar molecule. A polar molecule is a molecule, molecule that has a positive and negative end. Also, water molecules stick to each other using what is called a hydrogen bond. So let's look at what makes water a polar molecule. So we all know that the formula for water is H2O. So that's two hydrogens and one oxygen. So I'm going to draw an oxygen and I'm going to draw just a solid nucleus because I don't want to draw all the protons and neutrons. So for oxygen, oxygen has an atomic number of eight, which means it's going to have eight electrons. So the first shell is going to have two electrons because we know that the first shell can hold two. Then the second electron shell is going to have six. Three, four, five, six electrons. Now, our atoms wanna have eight electrons in their valence electron shell in order for them to be complete. So oxygen is looking for two more electrons. Then we have hydrogens. I'm just going to do a little H for its nucleus. And then we have hydrogen with one electron because hydrogen has an atomic number of one. And so the first electron, the first electron shell can hold two electrons. So hydrogen's, hydrogen's going to want to gain an extra electron. And so what's going to happen is we have oxygen and then we have two hydrogens that are going to join this oxygen in order for them to complete their shells. And so now, if you look at the valence electron shell of the oxygen, there's eight electrons. So you have eight electrons moving around that oxygen. And then the hydrogens, they have two that are going to come from the oxygen and orbit them. And so everyone here is going to be happy. So remember, when you share electrons, this is called a covalent bond. So water forms a covalent bond. It is sharing electrons. And so what's going to happen is, I'm going to switch to a different color here. So what's going to happen is two electrons are going to orbit around this hydrogen. And then you have two electrons that will orbit around this hydrogen. And then you have all eight orbiting around this oxygen. And then two around this hydrogen. And then two around this hydrogen. And eight around this oxygen. And two around the hydrogen. And two around the hydrogen. And eight around the oxygen. And so this orbiting is going to continue to happen. Now remember that electrons are negative and protons are positive. And so because oxygen is so much larger than hydrogen, the electrons are going to spend more time going around the oxygen than they will going around the hydrogen. And so because of this, oxygen spends more time with 10 electrons total. So that gives it a slightly negative charge. The hydrogens, because they're so much smaller than the oxygen, spend a majority of their time with no electrons orbiting around them because their electrons are busy, busy orbiting around the oxygen. So the hydrogens are going to be slightly positive. And so because this molecule has a negative side, the oxygen side, and a positive side, the hydrogen side, this is going to be polar. So it's a polar molecule because there's a positive and a negative end. Because water is polar, what happens is you have these oxygens and hydrogens on a water molecule that end up sticking to other water molecules. So because the hydrogens are slightly positive and the oxygen is slightly negative, the hydrogens of one water molecule are going to stick to the oxygens of another water molecule. And they're sticking this way because they're slightly positive and slightly negative. And so this is how water sticks to itself and it sticks to itself by what we call a hydrogen bond. It's called a hydrogen bond because the hydrogens are sticking to oxygens on the other water molecules. This is a very weak bond. You can easily break this bond just by 
pushing through the water or heating it up. So it's not as strong as a covalent bond, but it is a bond and it is what we call a hydrogen bond. Now because of the hydrogen bond of water molecules, this creates some fascinating properties. So water, unlike most things, when it's a liquid is more dense than when it's a solid. Most solids are more dense than their liquid form. And the reason this happens with water is because it's polar. So you have these water molecules that are sticking to other water molecules, forming a very dense liquid. So this water is packed pretty close together because of the hydrogen bonds. Now, when water is going to freeze, when order, in order for water to change state, these hydrogen bonds need to separate in order to change state. So what happens is you keep cooling water off, it gets colder and colder and colder, and then right before it freezes, what happens is all of those hydrogen bonds separate. And so water, when it freezes, separates all of its molecules, they all push apart. And so now there's a little gap between the water molecules. This is why when ice, this is why when water freezes, it turns into ice, it expands. Any of us who've ever left a soda can inside a freezer know because our parents get very mad at us because it explodes. Well, it explodes because the water molecules all pushed apart, they all separated right as it froze. So in order for the liquid water to turn in the solid ice, all of these bonds have to break, and then it expands. Because it expands, it's less dense. This is why ice floats. Ice being able to float on top of water is an incredibly important process for life. If ice was more dense than water, what would happen is the oceans would freeze solid and that would end life in the ocean. Because what would happen is the top layer of the water would freeze and then sink. Then the top layer would freeze again and sink. And then the top layer would freeze again and sink. And then what would happen is the oceans would freeze solid. If this happened, the life that can't live once it's frozen would all die. But instead what happens is the ice floats to the top, so the top layer freezes, but the water underneath stays liquid, which allows life to go on under the ice. So how much less dense is ice compared to water? Well, ice is 10% less dense, 10%. So this means that when ice is floating, 90% of it is under the water and 10% of it is above the water. This is where you get that term, the tip of the iceberg. Well, the part of the iceberg you can see is 10%. There's 90% of it under the water because ice is 10% less dense. Now, this property of water also causes something called high specific heat. So water takes, requires a lot of energy in order to change state. We just saw that with it going from a liquid to a solid. So in order for water to freeze, it takes a lot of energy for that to happen. Now, for water to turn into a gaseous state, so for water to turn into steam, this also requires a lot of energy because what has to happen again is those hydrogen bonds have to separate before water can turn into steam. And so in order for these water molecules to break apart and float off as steam, you need to provide enough energy to break that bond. And so a high specific heat means that it takes a lot of energy for something to change its temperature. Metal does not have a high specific heat. As soon as you heat up metal, it changes temperature. But water takes a long time to change temperature. Again, this is really good for the ocean because there's many animals that couldn't survive a quick temperature change. The ocean is pretty constant. So the water in the ocean would take a lot of energy in order for it to change just one degree temperature. And that's a good thing for life on this planet. 